So, uh, what resource we want to show up? Can you convince the last time that we have a monthly partner? Yeah, it's not the floor is yours. All right, great. Well, thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Fernando Snago. I'm a bridge engineer with WSP USA. Uh, and I worked with Islam for a couple of years when I started my career uh, with WSP. So uh, he asked me to present a few lectures uh, for his class. So I'm looking forward to cover this one. And I think there's another one coming up sometime. So uh, thank you for having me. So today I'm going to talk about uh, the general bridge geometry. Uh, things like what we need to show on the plan, how do we calculate bridge geometry, and how things tie in with the roadway uh, geometry that they prepare. Um, and also, when we're talking about bridges, what's important. So, say something like the superstructure elements and how to come up with depth. And uh, obviously, there are different type of superstructure. So, I would like to go through several uh, common superstructure types as well. And then after I cover those things, I'll show you how to come up with a key bridge geometry, such as the elevation, the spacing of the girders and things like that. And then if we have some time, we can go through a Q&A thereafter. So starting with the general bridge plan, the question is, what do we need to show? So here is a steel play girder bridge. Uh, that I was working on um, at some point. So when you look at the highlighted elements, I don't know how well you can see them on the uh, projector, but we want to show uh, where the support elements are. So this is a two span steel plate girder bridge. So we have an abutment here, an abutment here, and in the pier, center pier, this guy, right, abutment two, abutment two. So those are the basics that we want to show. Also, we want to show the span length, right? So we're showing these guys here. And then how the uh, alignments are in place. So we're calling this the ES alignment, right? So we want to show uh, at a straight line, we want to show the bearing of this alignment. If it's a curvature, we certainly want to show the radius of the curvature. Uh, and other horizontal curvature information here. And since this bridge is going over an existing roadway, which is called WN, we have some curvature information shown for these guys as well. So, you know, other than that, we certainly want to show the station of where these supports are, stations here, stations there. And uh, that's what we show on the plan view. Now, the elevation view coming down here. It's kind of like we're looking at this bridge. Uh, so let's say this is the plan view. We're looking at this bridge from the side. So that's what you would see from the side view of the bridge. So a lot of things are pretty similar, like the span length, right? Abutment labeling and labeling of the elements. So the barrier uh, abutments. When we're talking about the foundation elements, we want to call them out as well. But one thing that we certainly want to show on the elevation view is that what is the vertical clearance to an existing roadway or whatever it could be, like a water crossing bridge will show, will show the vertical clearance to that. So that's something we want to show on the elevation view. 
and the typical section. So this guy here is as if we're cut if we're cutting this bridge. It's kind of like looking at this way, right? So if you're looking into the bridge, along the bridge, you'll see these girders. So like I mentioned earlier, this is a steel plate girder bridge. So you'll see one, two, three, four girder lines. We certainly want to show the width of the roadway, how it's configured, how it's like, like the shoulder width, the lane width, which is typically 12 feet, and then the shoulder width, so also the barrier barrier. And uh, yeah, so that's what we want to show on the front sheet. So once we get into the detail sheet, we will we'll blow these things up and we'll show more details, but I'm not going to go into that in this lecture. But yeah, so just to summarize what I talked about here, this is a list of things that we want to show on the front sheets. Similar to the previous one, uh, this is a bridge plan of a structure that Islam and I worked on. When was that, 2016 or so, 2016, 2017? It's called the Laughlin Bullhead City Bridge crossing the Colorado River. So this is a little bit different type of bridge, meaning it's a water crossing uh, structure. So even then, you know, we still want to show the bridge configuration. So the span length, uh, the bearing of the alignment right here. So which direction is the alignment going? And this bridge being skewed, we want to show the skew angle. So those of you who don't know what the, what skew is, um, if your support is perpendicular to your alignment, there's no skew to that. So let's say if it looks something like that. But this bridge in particular, it has a support that's kind of going at an angle. So that's what the skew is about. And it's a very critical element of the bridge geometry. Um, another thing is that if you have a different uh, agencies that you're working with, so for this one in particular, uh, we were working with a uh, what's that an agency? Coast Guard. So they wanted certain width of the clearance between the structure uh, or the supports. So we have to show that here, and they wanted certain amount of vertical clearance uh, from the ordinary high water elevation. So things like that, depending on the Department of Transportation that you're working for, or depending on the agencies that you're coordinating with, um, information you might add or take out. So, uh, so those are the things that we want to know in terms of bridge geometry as a uh, bridge engineer. So now I'll talk about how the roadway geometry ties into the bridge geometry. So. I'm assuming that this is a senior level uh, undergrad course and also a graduate level student. So um, I'm sure that you have looked at the transportation class and how the vertical uh, curvature and how that elevations are being calculated. So in terms of the flow of the bridge design, the first, you know, before we touch the bridge design or anything like that, the roadway engineers will start to create the roadway, meaning that they'll define the alignment. Alignment is like the spine of the roadway, right? So everything comes from the alignment. So once they define that roadway uh, geometry, then they'll start to come up with the vertical information, meaning like how does that roadway go up or go down with a side curve or a crest curve, things like that. So. Uh, so those things are being defined by the roadway engineer and they control the bridge geometry. So I'll just put this slide up for the, those of you who may not have the formulas for the vertical cur curvature calculations, but this is how we come up with the um, elevations at a particular point within the vertical curvature. So um, if you have any questions on that, um, I'll be happy to answer your questions after the class or when, when you're solving the um, assignments, um, you can email me or wh whatever. But uh, yeah, I'm not gonna get into too much depth uh, on this slide. Now, that's the vertical information, which is along the alignment, but how does the roadway turn? So when, this is called a super elevation in my uh, state, but some states may call it cross slope. There are different terminologies here. So uh, I'll try to 
keep it keep it consistent in saying that it's a slip rate elevation. But uh, again, this is defined by roadway engineer. So it's a function of you know um, the, how the how tight the radius of the curvature of the roadway may be, and the design speed, right? So if you're if you have a really high speed high um, highway structure, then you probably don't want to turn quickly and have no super elevation. So those things are defined again by the roadway engineer. So they will come up with how these roadways are, whether it's crowning, when I say crown, the middle point's high, or once you start turning to the right, then you have a super elevation that's tilting to the right, right? And once you start turning to the left, then you wanna transition from uh, sloping to the right, to the left at some point. So again, uh, those things are tying into the alignment Right, and the super elevation, this is important. The super elevations are perpendicular to the alignment. So uh, when, I, when you see like a 2% cross slope, for example, um, you're seeing that the 2% is defined in a perpendicular direction from the alignment. So let's say this is the alignment here. And this 2% is occurring perpendicular to that point. And I'll cover that a little bit more numerically in an example problem later on, but I think you get the point of it. So uh, when you're just looking at the numbers of the super elevation, you might be a little bit confused, but when you're confused about it, you might want to ask yourself, well, when you're looking at an actual roadway or when you're driving on it, uh, which way does it turn and which way is a super elevation turning into. So let's let's say when you're having a left turn, uh, a roadway that turns to the left, well, your super elevation should be low to the left and high to the right. And when you're turning to the right, then the left should be high and should, this should be right, sorry. <laughs> this should be right, should be low, right? So these are the things that you should kind of think about um, as you're doing the mathematics, uh, because sometimes it's easy to be confused from the numbers that's presented on the plan and kind of get lost with the conceptual. So think about these two things when you're doing the mathematics of the geometry check, okay? So those are the key elements that you need to understand when you're going through the roadway geometry and how these things tie to the bridge geometry. So now I'm moving on to the uh, key superstructure elements and how to come up with the depth of it because all of it would tie into the uh, geometry calculation of the bridge. So the superstructure depth, these are defined by us, the bridge engineer. So we need to know the thickness of the deck and then the girder that comes underneath it. And then as we develop the design, those things are going to be, need to be coordinated with the roadway engineer. So the bridge plan that we were looking at earlier, which had a bridge that was going over an existing roadway, uh, we needed to make sure that we're providing the adequate vertical clearance. Meaning that if our girders are too deep, then we're not providing enough vertical clearance. And that's an issue with the you know, the trucks that might be coming in in the future or what have you. So uh, typically speaking, and I'm just speaking from a Nevada DOT perspective, but uh, we have to provide a minimum of 16 foot six vertical clearance. I believe that requirement is a little bit higher than what ASHO requires. And it's not really bridge engineering related, but that's something we need to provide for, um, for a, uh, vehicle bridges. Now, there are some other requirements, like if it's a pedestrian bridge, then I believe you have to provide 18 foot vertical clearance. So there's some different requirements for different structures in different states. Now, when you're talking about the superstructure depth, these are things that you need to consider. So starting from the top, you have a bridge deck. That's something that you're driving on. And in the hunch, you'll see in the following slides, but it's a element that goes between the bridge deck and a girder depth. Um, it's something that allows the girder to 
deflect during construction, uh, but I'm not going to get into that too much. And then obviously the gutter depth will be a big, big component of the superstructure depth. And then at the support locations, uh, assembly for the bearing will be very critical to come up with um, how that support elevations are being determined. So I'll start with the typical superstructure section for a steel eye girder. So steel eye girder is this guy, right? So it's an eye shape. I'm sure you guys have seen uh, a lot of this type of superstructure uh, through through your lifetime, but uh, starting from the top, um, again, we have the bridge deck, right? So this is what the this is what we drive on here, All right? So this is what we have, and then we have a hunch here. So this is the element that comes between the bridge deck and in the superstructure. Okay, so this element is allowing the girder to deflect during construction while maintaining the full deck section for the depth so to speak so then um depending on the superstructure type how we define the geometry is a little bit different so the steel eye girder in particular uh, once you get into the steel design you'll understand that the top flange thickness this guy here it changes throughout the span even within the span so in order to define the geometry a little bit easier, we typically define this geometry from top of the deck to bottom of the top flange so that we keep this geometry a constant value while you can allow, uh, let's say, half an inch of thickness variation of the top flange. So when, I, when, we're, look, when we're looking at a steel eye girder, just want to pay attention to the depth through the web. So meaning from the top of the deck to bottom of the top line, which is also the top of the web. Okay. And then we certainly want to know the depth of the web. So this, this is the web right here. So that's what we're talking about. And also thickness of the bottom flange. So all in all, when we're talking about the depth of the superstructure, you want to add up the depth to the web. So again, from top of the deck to bottom of the top flange, which is also top of the web, and the depth of the web, and then bottom flange thickness. So we're just coming up a combination of this right here, which is depth of a steel eye girder. Okay. And then steel eye girder has a lot of you know combination of bearing assembly and one that i'm showing you is pretty common i would say but um so what, you, what you're looking at is a really zoomed in version of this portion so we're not showing the entire thing here but this is the bottom flange that we're just looking at right so this is right here and this is the web right here so underneath the bottom flange what we have is something called sole plate. So sole plate allows the uh, bearing to have a, a horizontal leveled surface, top and bottom. Uh, so when you imagine bearing, you certainly want to have a leveled surface at the top and the bottom. But then what the roadway or the bridge geometry may be doing is it might be coming in at an angle, right? So let's say this is a bridge, but you want to have this bearing flat and level. So what this sole plate allows you to do is to have this plate here and have it beveled, meaning have a different thickness front and the back, right? This is a sole plate. So then this thing allows the bearing to be flat uh, and leveled so that it's, it's able to perform properly because it needs to have a leveled uh, surface at top and bottom. Now, sometimes, and this is what we like to do, is to have this little pocket of quarter inch so that the bearing doesn't slide out uh, unintentionally. So we have this little notch uh, of quarter inch, but 
it really depends on DOT. Uh, some states may not do it. Some engineers may choose not to do it, but you know, this is something that we like to do. Now, this is a steel eye girder bearing assembly, and I'll talk about uh, precast eye girder. So this is pretty similar to what we were looking at for the steel plate girder. Um, instead of saying that it's dimensioned um, the depth to the web, um, there are different states, uh, different labeling, but we have it, something called A dimension. So A dimension is pretty similar to um, a steel eye girder, but it's a combination of the deck thickness and then the depth of the haunch. Okay. Now the reason why this A dimension does not include a top flange like the steel eye girder is because steel eye girder geometry is constant throughout for the most part. So to come up with the superstructure depth of a precast girder is simply adding A dimension, right? So deck and a hunch, and then the girder depth. So this is a lot more simple. Okay. Um, and then the bearing assembly for precast girder is pretty similar. So we have this again, uh, we have this girder here. This is a side view. So this is a side view here. And if you're looking at it from the front, it looks something like this, right? So we have something called bearing plate. The bearing plate is going to be welded to the tapered sole plate. So again, this sole plate allows the girder, so this sole plate allows the bearing to be level. This diagram shows that a lot cleaner, right? It's a level, level, top and bottom, but then the bridge is coming in at an angle, right? It has a profile grade line or whatever it is. So this sole plate allows you to adjust with a gray line that's coming in and have a flat surface to sit on. And again, similar to the other one, we might have a uh, the notching detailing going on, but uh, it's up to the designer to include it or not. So, um, you know, some I've seen details where the bearing plate is coming out of the girder, uh, but for our case, we tend to embed them in the girder. So it's really up to the fabricator and also up to the engineer as well. Now, the last, very common type of superstructure is something called the uh, cast in place box girder. So the CIP is cast in place. That's what it stands for. And you see that very often in California, Nevada. I don't know what other states does this, but um, we see that very common in those states. I'm not sure if East Coast or um, utilizing the superstructure type. But um, so just to go over some of the elements in the name of it, uh, we have the barrier rail, right? So even if you go off the lane, uh, you don't want to go off the bridge. So that's what it allows you to keep things on the bridge. Now there's a design procedure for this that's very extensive, but I'm not going to cover that in this class. So then the barrier rail is sitting on the overhang right, so which ties into the overall deck. So um, that's the top element that you would see from the surface. And then underneath it, we have a series of web. So the section that you're looking at, we have two exterior webs, these guys, and then two interior webs. So the exterior webs tend to be uh, diagonal to reduce the width of the overhang. Um, that's something we do, but we want to keep the interior webs vertical as much as possible. And then underneath it, we have something called a soffit. So that ties everything together underneath. And when you're looking at the casting place box girder, the girder depth is just simply taking from top of the deck to bottom of the soffit. So this bridge in particular, it's just a clean five foot dimension. So um, that's the basics of the typical superstructure section, uh, the element names that I would like you to be familiar with when I go through the example problem. Um, and so I'll just kind of go through uh, what 
we want to show on the bridge plans once we get into the details. So like I was describing earlier, uh, we certainly want to know what the vertical clearance is. The whole purpose of bridge is to clear something underneath. So, you know, like I was saying earlier, you probably want to provide 16.6 vertical clearance to the roadway below. Uh, depending on the agencies that you're working with, um, they might have a specific vertical clearance to the water body. Uh, for my project, it was about 35 feet, so that's something we have to provide. And another thing that's very important is the elevation at top of support elements. So what does it mean? Well, we understood that we have these girders, uh, we have these bearings, but when you're constructing bridges, you start from the bottom. So you start from the foundation and then you build a substructure, which is like a column or wall or whatever, and then you build to the pier cap. So what we need to communicate to the contractor is that to which elevation are they building these columns to? Or at which elevation do these pier needs to be, uh, have a seating elevation? So something like that. Uh, also, the things that I talked about is tapered sole plate. So tapered sole plate, like I was describing earlier, is that it allows you to take out the profile grade difference from front and, at, front and back of the bearing such that the bearing can have a level um, surface to sit on, right? So again, in order to understand, well, what's the thickness that's required for the sole plate, well, you need to understand the geometry of the bridge, right? So PGL. PGL means profile grade line, okay? So that's another thing that you need to calculate by hand. You need to understand what it is. And then at the end of all of these calculations, we always, always, always want to verify against roadway files. So I was trying to demonstrate what you would do to check against it, but unfortunately my uh, software is not working today, so I can't show you how to do it, but um, um, there are ways to verify your calculation against what roadway engineers come up with. So that's what I mean by verify against roadway files, okay? So all of that being said, uh, I would like to uh, go through an example problem. Um, so this lecture started at 3.30, right? So 3.30. Yeah, okay. So we have about 40 minutes. Okay. All right, so this example problem walks through how to incorporate vertical curvature calculation at a given um, station, station of your interest, and then calculate the depth of the superstructure based on the detail that's provided to you, and then how to come up to see elevation at the pier. So what's going to be given in this example problem is it's a bridge plan, a roadway geometry. And uh, as an example problem, I'm telling you that the top of deck to top of web depth is 15 inches. Uh, depth of the web is 54 inch. Thickness of flange is three inch. Soap plate at the center line is 1.719 inch. Bearing pad is 5.75. And then we also want to consider uh, that recess. Uh, the pocket of 0.25 inches. So at the end of this problem, uh, we're looking at this pier of the bridge that I was showing you earlier. And what is the elevation here? What's the elevation there? What is it here and there? And we're looking at girder one, girder two, girder three, girder four. Now, one thing I want to emphasize here is that centerline pier, which tends to be centerline of the bridge, okay, may not be lining up with the alignment line. So as you can see here, uh, this ES, this is an alignment line, right? It's alignment. However, centerline pier, which is also centerline bridge, is six foot offset, okay? So that's something that you need to keep in mind and you also need to pay attention to when you're looking at a bridge plan. 
Okay. So the procedure of how to come up with the C elevation is first, you'll need to identify the station at the pier center line, right? So you need to understand that well, where's the pier along this bridge? That's one thing you need to understand, identifying the station at the pier center line. Once you know where that pier center line is, then you can identify or you can calculate the elevation of the alignment at the center line pier. And it's kind of difficult to visualize it when it's just the, uh, the bullet points, but I'll kind of explain it again in a second. And then once you determine that elevation, then you can determine the spacing of the girders, right? So starting from here, figure out the offset to each of these girders. And that's gonna come up, that's gonna give you the grade difference that you get from a super elevation. And then you come up with the superstructure depth, right? So you sum up the web depth of the uh, depth to web, depth of web, thickness of bottom flange, and bearing assembly. So that'll give you the entire depth of the superstructure of the pier. And at the end of the day, you can come up with these elevations at the, at the pier. <clears throat> so step one, right? Identifying the station at the pier center line. So when you look at the bridge plan that I was showing you earlier, which I think this will be on assignment too, it's exactly the same bridge plan. Um, you'll kind of want to pay attention to how this thing is being done. So uh, on this plan view, right, we have a, um, abutment presented, the pier presented, and abutment two is being presented. So the problem asks for pier support elevation. So you locate the pier here, and then you have the station of the pier, which is ES 1863.47. Now POC means that point of curvature, which doesn't really have much to do with the calculations, but I just want to understand that, hey, this point is on the curvature. Now, when you look at something like this, POT, it's on a point on tangent, meaning that this point is after the curvature, so it's just a straight line thereafter. Um, but this doesn't really have much to do with the example problem here. Now, again, I want to emphasize the part that the center line bridge which is showing this dash line here, is not equal to the alignment. So again, we have this six foot offset here that's gonna come up again uh, later on. But again, you always, always, always wanna check how these things are configured. So, so now that we know the pier center line uh, station, which is 1863.47, let's calculate the vertical uh, curvature and what the elevation is at that point. Now, um, you have, you're going to have in your assignment this vertical curvature uh, diagram. So, different states may show it differently, but my guess is that this is pretty common of how to, how are things are being shown. So, you certainly want to show uh, the beginning of the curvature station and the elevation of it and where that curvature, vertical curvature is ending, and then the elevation to, and the PVI station elevation, we certainly wanna show, which again, this is defined by the roadway engineer. They'll prepare it, and they'll hand it to us. But we need to work with this information, right? Now we have the additional information of curvature, which is an L element, uh, 450 feet of the curvature. Um, so those are the elements that you will need uh, to come up with the um, elevation along this PGL line, okay? So from this diagram, you need to gather uh, four sets of information, right? So at PVC, you have the station elevation, PVI, you have, again, station elevation, PVT, station, elevation, and then L, which is length of the curvature. And remember, we're calculating the elevation at the pier center line, which lands at about 
here, and it's a station uh, 186347, 6347, right? Yeah, 6347, yep. So that's what we're doing here. So now, now that we have these parameters, right? These key parameters, station elevation, station elevation, and an L, we can come up, uh, we can start utilizing that formula that I was showing you earlier. So again, uh, you should be able to find these formulas uh, on Google, really. Uh, but if you have a transportation engineering book, you can find them there. Um, those of you who are studying for PE exam or FE, uh, you should have these formulas as well. So uh, G1 is the grading uh, heading into the PVI. So you want to take the PVI elevation, PVC elevation, PVI station, PVC station, and you come up with a grading between the PVI and PVC station. And that's what you would get. Okay. And then uh, please pay attention to that, the unit. So we're showing this in percent. So the, when you type this into the calculator, you actually get 0 0.04111. But when you want to show this in percent, we'll actually use this in the calculations, but you want to use it as 4.111 value, okay? Now, G2 is the grading on the other end of the curve. So this is, G2 is this way, right? And G1 is that way. So G2 is the other, other end of the curve. Um, so you're calculating the grading from PVT to PVI, which you should get from this diagram, you should get a negative slope. And again, similar to G1, you want to use this value as a percent value. So negative 5.796. Okay. And then L, you got it from the plans, so it's 450. And then uh, I would calculate some a value called R. So it's just an empirical formula G2 minus G1 taking the L. And L is in terms of station. So if you can pull up your transportation book or whatever it is, uh, we want to use this value as a station. So each station is 100 feet. So you take 450 divided by 100, so it's 4.5. And one, once you type this number into the calculator, you get something uh, is 2.25, uh, 2.20. So then X is the distance from PVC to the point of interest. So this is something that's very, very important. So when I look at this diagram again, right? So let's say this is a center line of the pier and PVC is here. So this is the value that we are looking for, okay? So 1863.47 minus 1620. So when you type it into the calculator, it's 243 feet, but you want to use this as a station value. So it actually becomes 2.4347. Okay. So these are some of the adjustments that, you know, when you just type it into the calculator, some things might look off, but you need to understand what these values are and what the units are. So let's, let's pay attention to that um, as we go. So once we have this G1, G2, R, and X value, then we can start to utilize that, uh, the big empirical formula that they have for the, uh, the grade, sorry, the elevation calculation. So Y on curve, right? So it's the elevation on curve, any point on the curve that you want to find out. Uh, you want the elevation at the PVC, G1, X, X we calculated earlier. We have G2, G1, and L. And um, I know that several books show it, show this formula in this way, uh, but the reason why I calculated R value in the previous slide is to kind of simplify this third term a little bit, uh, but whatever you prefer, uh, as long as your units are in correct order or consistent, then you should be able to come up with these values. So uh, plugging in these numbers, so let's just go back to, uh, a few slides a little bit. So, um, elevation of PVC is this guy, right? So 21, 29, 95. And then we calculated 
G1, which is 4.111. G2 is negative 5.796. R value is 2.2016, right? And X value is station 24347, which in reality it becomes uh, 2.43 or 7 in the calculator. Okay. So once you run that number or the formula, you would come up with an elevation of 2133.43. Okay. So great. So what does this number actually mean? So this first step was to calculate what this elevation corresponds to. So, so when you look at the plan view, we identify that the pier center line is here, station is 186047. So we were working towards the elevation at this point within this vertical curvature, right? So we now identify that, that the elevation is 2133.43, okay? So that when you look at the typical section view, what we calculated, again, is the alignment of ES at the PGL line, which is at the top of the deck, and this is 2133, 43. Oh, whoops. Yep, 43, yep, sorry about that. So that's the elevation here. Now the next step is to work to uh, determining this elevation here, right? So that's the step two. And when you see from this diagram, right, you'll see the super elevation in the right high, left low. So as you go uh, to the right of the bridge, you obviously gain some elevation, right? As you go to the left, you gain some elevation starting from this 21, 33, 43. So let's mathematically um, calculate that. So first thing you'll need is to determine the offset to the girder center line. So when I say offset, it's all offset is always it's a perpendicular dimension from the alignment line. So when you see these arrows, right, offset to girder one, right? So it's this dimension, girder two, this guy here grid three and grid four, so on. So when you look at the bridge plan, they'll give you hints like this. So it says eight foot six, eight foot six, and has this guy here. So it's showing that the girder spacing is eight foot six, okay? And I actually kind of jumped the numbers, but uh, bridge plan should always show the, um, the alignment to the one of the girders, the offset to one of the girders. So it's showing that it's one foot nine to the left from the ES line to the left to girder two. Okay. So with this, you can start doing some mathematics here. Okay. So for girder number one, uh, we have, uh, well, you get, I guess you guys will be able to calculate the uh, girder offset here, but uh, to the right of the ES, right? So this is very important. To the right of the ES, uh, the offset to G1 is 6.75 feet. And, and you're simply taking uh, minus 1 foot 9 plus 8 foot 6, and you'll get this dimension to be 6.75. Now, from here, you can work backwards or whichever you prefer to do. But then uh, the offset to G2 is simply 1 foot 1.75 feet, right? And then G3, you just add 8 foot 6 here, and you get 10.75 to the left, to the left, really important. And then girder 4, you get 18.75 offset to the left. So these are really important values, and it's even more so important to understand which direction, left or right, is the offset, okay? Because when you start putting numbers together, we have the positives and negatives. So you need to understand which way it's sloping to and what it means in terms of number. Now, that's, the, that's more like the bridge perspective, but what does it mean from the roadway perspective? So again, 
uh, different states may show this in a different manner, but in Nevada, uh, we have this super elevation diagram that is, that's displayed in this two lines. So uh, just to give you a quick answer of what this means, uh, plus 0 0.060 foot per foot right. So what it means is that from the EDS alignment line, it's a positive 0 0.06 for every foot, uh, you gain 0 0.06 feet. So 6% uh, going to the right, right? So let's say this is the ES, it's going to the right. And then what this means is the negative uh, 0 0.06 foot per foot on the left. So it's going to 6% uh, 6 6 downwards to the left. So this is what it means physically. And it's kind of following, following the trend that I was showing you earlier. It's a 6% six, six, six percent, six percent max, but it doesn't really, you can ignore this max term, but you know, that's, that's what it's doing. And this super elevation diagram kind of confirms uh, that diagram or the typical section that I was showing you earlier. Uh, but again, I just want to emphasize that different states may label this thing differently. Um, but conceptually speaking, and also that uh, the intuition that I was talking about earlier is that when you're when you have a left turning curvature, um, you imagine that the roadway will be tilting to the left, meaning that your right shoulder is high and the left shoulder is low. So this kind of confirms that uh, the general understanding of the roadway, right? Now, what does the 6% mean? So those of you who may not know, uh, when it says 6% slope, what it means is that every 100 feet in the X direction, you have a delta of six feet, right? So that's what 6% means, 6% slope. It's kind of hard to draw it, but 6%. Okay, so um, that's... That's what it is. Um, another thing, another important information is that uh, there's some transition of the super elevation along the roadway, as you can imagine. Um, and that's kind of similar to, uh, let me just go back to the way, way, way before slides. Sorry. Uh, I should have been included in there. Like this, right? So this diagram shows the transition perfectly. So it starts at a crown, but then at some point the roadway flips over and it tries to go back to the normal crown again. So uh, that's what uh, this diagram is trying to show is that, hey, there's a transition of the super elevation from here, the station to that point, that point to that point. But the important part of it is that between station ES170774, to 191208, it's a constant slope. So a lot of things become a lot easier. It's a 6% slope throughout the bridge and nothing to change there, so you're good. So uh, now that we know that it's a 6% slope, 6% higher on the right, 6% lower on the left, and you also know the girder offset dimension, then you can come up with, well, what is that? Uh, the grade difference compared to the ES, which again was 2133.3, and you can come up with the elevation at top of the deck at each girder center line. Okay, so it's a simple math, I think. Um, so starting with the PGO elevation, again, is 2133.43, right? So you're taking 6% positive to right and 6% negative to left. So when you do the mathematics here, you always start with the PGL elevation. So let's say for girder one, right? So starting here, 2133.43, you take 6% uh, super elevation and you have a offset of positive 6.75 feet. So you end up with this elevation, which is 23. A four, okay. Now, when you go to the left, let's pick girder three. 
you have an offset of negative 10.25 feet. So again, starting with 21.33.43 at the PGL, you take 6% super elevation times negative 10.25, which is 21.32.82. So it's a little bit lower comparing to what we started here, right? So 21.32.82. So then so on, so you can calculate that for two other variables, right? And then, I guess this is a cleaner diagram of what we just calculated. TOD means top of deck, um, but that's what that's the numbers that you would come up with, right? And that's what it means, this is so on. Sorry, this is up here. Um, this, this is what it means when, it, when you're looking at the diagram, okay? So PGL, we calculated at step one, and then now we're taking the offset with super elevation and coming up with this guy, that guy, that guy, and that guy. So now, if you can figure out the depth of the superstructure, right? Then you can figure out, this is a terrible sketch, but you can figure out the C elevation that comes here, which is a function of top of deck elevation, also the superstructure depth, right? And also the bearing that comes here and so on. So let's look into what the superstructure depth is. Um, in the problem state statement, uh, it was given that depth to web, so from top of the deck to bottom of the top flange is 15 inches, okay? And then this dimension, which is depth of the web, it's 54 inches, so it's coming from here to there, right? And the thickness of bottom flange is three inches, so it's just a little bit here. So when you add these guys all up together, what you would come up with is a clean 72 inch, which is six feet. So measuring from this point to bottom of bottom flange, right? You have a dimension of six feet. <clears throat> So that's just a uh, that's just a superstructure portion of it. Or well, I should just say the deck and the girder. But we want to consider the bearing assembly as well. So when we look at this detail again, <clears throat> uh, we have a girder depth of six feet, which ends here, right? Because this is the bottom flange. So we need to add up the thickness of the sole plate uh, bearing pad, and we need to adjust for this. Um, this pocket, which is quarter inch. So in the problem statement, it was stated that the sole plate thickness at, this, at the center line is 1.719 inch. It's not a clean number, but it is what it is. Uh, thickness of the bearing pad, so it's this guy here, is 5.75 inch. And then the recess is 0 0.25 inches. Now note that the C elevation is measured to uh, top of the pocket. So we're coming down all the way to here, the bottom of bearing assembly, but then you kind of need to put this quarter inch back up to the calculation. What I mean mathematically is that you add the thickness of the sole plate, right? This guy here, plus bearing assembly, which again comes down to this uh, point here, which is 5.75 inch, but then you have to reduce it by quarter inch just to account for this uh, C elevation in a pocket detailing. So with that, you get 7.219 inch with just the bearing assembly depth. And so you simply add it with the six foot depth of girder in the deck and you get 6.602 feet of the depth of the superstructure. So uh, the 6.602 feet is basically, if you were to draw this uh, plate here, bearing assembly, and then the recess like that, to the top of seat, sorry, seat elevation here, 
this is what we're looking at, the 6.602E. Okay. So then I think we have everything that we need to come up with the uh, C elevation at each girder. So remember, remember that uh, we calculated top of deck elevation at each girder center line. So we have G1, G2, girder three, girder four, right? And all of these are a little bit different. And the reason is, again, is because we have a, uh, up above, we have a 6% super elevation, right? And girders come in like that. This is the way off. Uh, girders come in like that. We have a uh, plate, bearing assembly, and this bit of a recess going on. It's a airboard drawing, but that's what's going on here. So uh, we calculated that the entire superstructure, including the bearing assembly, is 6.602 feet. So let's say you take a couple of deck elevation of four, which is 21, 32, 31 taking this 6.602 feet, 6.602 feet dimension, and you're taking it down to 21, 25, 71. So these are the um, solutions to what we're doing just now. And uh, similar to this guy at the pier, you know, we certainly want to understand uh, certainly want to label similar C elevation at abutment one. We want to know that for abutment two. Uh, and I think I was showing this earlier. Yeah, but you know, something like this, right? Corner of each support like element. We show that, we show a couple of column elevation at this point. We show that here, right? Top of drill shaft things like that, we want to calculate, verify, and put them on the plan. So, you know, we just went through a hand calculation step-by-step -step, uh, procedure of how to come up with these elevations, right? So it's kind of going back to um, what we were doing just now. So we, for, from the plan set, we identify where is this element of our interest, right? So for this example problem, we wanted to know what the center line pier C elevations are, right? So from the plan, we picked up this information by the station uh, of the pier, and then we went back to the roadway, uh, roadway uh, vertical curvature information, Right, so you pick up the key ele key elements like the PVC information, PVI information, PVT information, and the length of the curvature. And then you want to utilize these numbers to plug it into the uh, typical vertical curvature formula, and then you come up with the PGL or the elevation at PGL of point of your interest. And then thereafter, what you would do is to start looking at the offset of the girders, right? And then also the super elevation of the deck at that very particular point. And then you adjust your uh, elevation from PGL to center line of the girder based on the offset and the super elevation. And you come up with these guys, right? For each girder, one, two, three, four, right? And then now you want to know the depth of the superstructure. So how much do you want to take it down by, right? So then you look at the problem statement or the bridge plan in the real uh, situation or the workplace uh, situation. And then you determine the depth of the superstructure. So first with the deck and the girder only, and then you look at the bearings, right? If you have a bearing at that particular spot, and you combine it to come up with a total superstructure depth. And then you say, okay, well, we know this elevation up top, you just take it down by 6.602 feet, and this is C elevation. So uh, that was a recap of the example problem that I just went through. 
And it's kind of nice to see the process laid out. But once you start to understand the process, you probably want to put a spreadsheet together. So, you know, um, example of it, I think I could just show you this one. Is that, you know, you have a spreadsheet. Um, it's hard to lay this out in a really clean manner at the first time, but, you know, general flow of it is that you want to have all the roadway information in here and uh, PVC, PVI, PVT information. Uh, so length of the curvature, right? Stuff that you were looking at just now. So you kind of want to have the given portion of it. Also the depth of the superstructure, right? And then uh, you come up with the PGL formula. You want to pop it in to calculate PGL elevation. So it's not this one so far. <clears throat> oh, this one, yeah, here one. Yep. So, you know, the station, right? And then you come up with the PGL elevation based on the uh, givens or the roadway properties that uh, you set up earlier. Right. So, all of these guys tie into the uh, inputs that you have set up earlier. And then you have the offset, you know, the super elevation at that particular spot. And then you can come up with a top deck elevation and then seat elevation. So um, that's the kind of the geometry check that you want to do by hand. Now, unfortunately, again, I wasn't able to show you how to check against the roadway file, but uh, essentially what you would do is when you go into the CAD file, um, they have something called the surface file. So it's kind of like a 3D modeling. And you pick a point of your interest and they give you an elevation back to you. So something that you can check against is that your top of deck elevation, right? So you can always, because the roadway engineers are modeling this surface here. Uh, that's what roadway people are concerned about. So you can always check your calculation against the roadway file and if it goes 31 32.31 then it means that your calculation was good and you're, ca you're capturing very intent of the roadway design so um this one i think that's where we wanted to go to q a but I guess, yeah, sorry, before one thing um, I want to mention is that, you know, you'll probably go through a series of concrete design, steel design, uh, superstructure, substructure design. But when you get into a bridge design firm, uh, they'll almost always expect you to understand this geometry, how things are being put together. Um, also, know this formula, how to use it. And uh, you usually start with a geometry check because that's what they expect you to know. So uh, it's also uh, beneficial if you know how to put a clean spreadsheet together, uh, verify your calculation yourself, and put something like that together. Um, so yeah, that's something I wanted to mention uh, before we go into Q and A. So. Um, Sorry, I can't. Uh, can I can't you? Uh, yeah, you kind of have to speak into the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You kind of have to speak into it. Can you hear me? Uh, it got worse. <laughs> Thanks. It was better before. Do you guys have a mic or something? Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's a little better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions? No questions in that you understand everything or tell me. Hey, how's it going? Um, my question is pretty general towards like your position. I was yep. just wondering how, how many years you've been doing these types of 
uh, technical calculations? Oh yeah, sure. So um, I have been working in the bridge industry for about six years now. Uh, and so since day one, um, I have been doing these calculations. So, you know, it's really important to lay these calculations out and be comfortable with it. And each and every bridge, you have to do this calculation. So each bridge, as you imagine, you have a different geometry, right? You might have a skew that comes into play, which makes things a lot more complicated. So, yeah, um, I've been doing this for six years and I think I'll be doing this for many more years. So. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> if not, uh, thank you, Fernando. Yeah, should we go through the assignments a little bit? Um, if you want, yeah, do you have a copy of the assignment, right? Yeah, I have the copy of the assignment. Let me just pull it up real quick. And they have the assignment as well, right? Correct, yeah. What is it called now, the system? It used to be Blackboard or something. What? You have it from your email, I think. Yeah, can you see my screen still? Yes. Okay, so I think I can walk, walk through um, the second half of the assignment, right? Problem three yes. and four? Yeah. Okay, so, um, so what we're looking at here is problem three. So, Using the attached drawing, calculate top of C elevation at abutment one. Following parameters are given. So let's just go through the diagrams here. So again, uh, it's, you should be pre pretty familiar with this by now, but same bridge that we went through the example with. And uh, we were calculating the center line pier um, seat elevation, right? But now we're, we're looking at abutment one. So it's a little bit different station, but exactly the same procedure. To come up with the um, station, right? Capture the necessary information from the uh, roadway plan set, right? So, what's the super elevation? Where is that station? Things like that. And then, uh, and then you have this typical deck section. So, you have the offset of the bridge, uh, you have the girder depth, which is given in the problem statement. So yeah, top of deck to top of web, 15 inch, 54 inch, three inch. It's a little bit tricky that the thickness of the sole plate is different uh, between the girders. So please pay attention to that, okay? And then the bearing pad is five inches instead of 5.25. So, and then consider that little notch of 0.25 inch. Now, problem four is a little bit more involving. This is a calculation of the vertical clearance, which I didn't really touch upon in the lecture, but um, so I am providing the minimum vertical clearance is occurring at ES station, da, 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 an offset of negative 20.58 feet. So you don't really have to go to the plan and pick out the information. I'm giving these to you. Now note that the vertical clearance involves the, the bridge itself and then the roadway beneath it. So when you look at this problem statement, it says that WN, the roadway below, uh, station offset, and they calculate the minimum uh, vertical clearance uh, with the superstructure depth being six feet. So um, for the graduate, this is for graduate students, right? So yes. when you look at the plan view, um, you know, this is the point of vertical, point of minimum vertical clearance. So this is the, what was that station? Uh, ES 1746 with the offset of 2058. And then WN, right? Alignment that goes underneath it. And WN underneath it, right? So uh, that gets you the, I'm giving you the station and an offset of negative 16 feet. And what is that vertical clearance? Uh, I guess solutions here. 
but you're gonna have to go the work uh, to uh, calculate the vertical clearance between the bridge and the roadway. And so not just the ES uh, super elevation and the vertical curvature information, I think we're providing the WN, yep, there we go. Um, vertical curvature information and the super elevation information. So this one's a little bit more involving, but at the end of the day, everything boils down to, you know, uh, top of deck elevation. I just say for you super and you're good to go. So if you have any questions, um, I guess they're going to have my contact information, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So you can email me um, and I'll try to work through it with you. So. Thank you, uh, Fernando. Yeah, um, thank you for having me. That's great. I'll see you later. All right. Yeah, see you in the next, next lecture. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.